Perry Gilpin and an adorable dog make How to Train Your Husband a watchable film. This is also known by the title How to Pick Your Second Husband First, which I hate. I normally am not that bothered about titles of films, but there's something about that I really do not care for. And unfortunately, there are quite a few things in this that I just thought were not done very well. There are some okay aspects to it, but in general, I'm not going to be recommending it. This was released in 2018. It's written and directed by Sandra L. Martin, and it stars Julie Gonzalo as Gillian James and Jonathan Chase as Justin James, and their performances are fine. No problems with anybody's performances, but they are really unlikable characters. Gillian is a marriage counsellor. She's trying to write a book. She's going through problems with her husband. And as an experiment, she tries to, well, she does get a dog and tries to compare this companionship with that of her husband and what it's like to train a dog versus, I guess, training your husband. That's kind of where the title comes from. And the dog is so beautiful. The dog is absolutely adorable. He's called Henry and also George, depending on what part of the film you're watching. The fact that it had two names, there's a reason for it. It's a pretty stupid reason that really doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's really not a big issue compared to the rest of it because the characters, as I said, are both really unlikable. Gillian and Justin are just not very well written at all. All of the supporting characters are absolutely fine. I don't have any issues with any of the other characters but as our protagonists, I did not like them at all. I kind of found Gillian really annoying. I found a lot of their actions unbelievable. A lot of their responses to the situations just completely over the top and not realistic at all. And the narrative is not interesting. Nothing interesting happens in this at all, apart from the dog. The scenes that I liked involved the dog, whether the dog was outside or going to the bathroom. When one of the highlights in a film is watching a dog being taken outside to go potty, that's a bit of a problem. The dog is beautiful though and as I said I love Perry Gilpin in this because I love Perry Gilpin but that's me being biased of course. The narrative is empty. It tries to raise some interesting points about relationships and communication and human versus dog companionship. It tries. I feel like it made a genuine effort to be thought-provoking and fascinating and then throw in an adorable dog. And it sounds like you have a, a recipe for a good narrative. Unfortunately, nothing happens. Occasionally it tries to be dramatic, but I just don't care about the character's actions. I don't believe the situation. I don't like the characters at all. So I didn't like anything that happened in this that wasn't focusing on this dog. Put it this way, if we didn't see the dog as much as we did, it would probably be unwatchable. It's not a good narrative. It's not well written. The protagonists are not well written at all. As I said, supporting characters absolutely fine. The music is really annoying as well. Not all of it. Some of it is fine. But some of it stands out in a way that's not pleasant. And not in a way where it's too loud. I don't mean that the sound mixing isn't very good. I just mean the choice of music at certain points is just not pleasant to listen to. Doesn't really feel like it goes well with the scene. Again, not all of it. But on at least two occasions, I, I made note of the fact that the music was jarring and not very pleasant to listen to. So, all things considered, there are a lot of problems with this film. It could have been good. In the right hands, it could have been a good story that raised some interesting points. And again, all of that mixed in with an adorable dog. It might not have been too bad. And as I said, performances, absolutely fine. I don't think it was miscast. That's not something I have a problem with. It's just the narrative, a little bit of the music, a little bit of the character writing. I wouldn't recommend it unless you're a fan of somebody who's in it. It's one that I would probably have got round to watching eventually anyway, because I love Perry Gilpin. But unless there's a reason why you want to watch it, if you're just looking for a good film, then How to Train Your Husband or How to Pick Your Second Husband First is not one that I'm going to be recommending.